Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, the talk is about uh, deep dive into the scheduler in Apache Spark. Uh, so first, I will introduce myself. I'm a software engineer at uh, Databricks, and my name is Shinbo. Uh, so I'm uh, currently an uh, active contributor of Apache Spark. And my interested areas vary from uh, Spark Core to Spark SQL. Uh, so uh, please let me introduce uh, Databricks. And Databricks is founded by the original team who created Apache Spark. We provide a platform that isolates innovation by unified data science, engineering, and business. Uh, we unify data engineers and data scientists by collaborative notebooks, and we unify data and uh, AI technology uh, by Databricks runtime. And we eliminate infrastructure complexity over the cloud native service. Okay, so uh, feel free to try with uh, Databricks Cloud. So first, let's begin with the basic architecture uh, about the Spark Core module. Actually, uh, when, we, uh, when we launch a Spark, uh, a Spark application, uh, we first start a Spark Contact. Uh, Spark Contact is the main entry of user jobs. So uh, when you start a Spark Contact, it will, uh, it will initiate a pair of task scheduler and the scheduler backend. Uh, the task scheduler is responsible for scheduling tasks, which we will uh, introduce uh, focus on, on that uh, in this talk. And the scheduler backend is uh, focused on the uh, cluster resource management, uh, which we uh, implement both locally and with a cluster mode. So the Spark contact, uh, as we mentioned before, is uh, the main entry point, and uh, it provides uh, the API for users to submit a job, uh, to cancel a job, uh, and it creates scheduler backend, and uh, the task scheduler, and the uh, deck scheduler on initialization. So here, uh, let's see uh, what it happens when we submit a Spark job. Uh, so the scheduling pro process starts with uh, RDD uh, objects. We first build operator as a DAG uh, called DAG, or the directed uh, acyclic graph. Then the DAG scheduler splits the graph into stages and submit each stage by ready. That means when each parent of the stage is ready, we submit a new stage. And, and the task scheduler is responsible for launch tasks and manage the process and return the results or retry on failure. And the workers actually execute the tasks and the store and, the and, the, and serve the blocks that we, uh, that we generate and we consume on each task. So let's begin, uh, let's begin from a simple example that, uh, that uh, RDD1 performs a join uh, action over RDD2. And then the result is grouped by some column. And, the, and uh, finally, we filter with some uh, predicates. So when, the, uh, when this RDD is tra uh, transferred into stages, uh, we can see that uh, the, the join operator produces a co-grouped RDD, and that uh, contains a shuffle dependency. So uh, another shuffle RDD is generated by the group by uh, action, and the filter action is transferred into a map partitions RDD. So this way, uh, your command uh, becomes a chain of RDDs, and then we have to divide the chain of RDDs into separated uh, stages. 
the way we split them is that uh, we split RDD chains before the Shafa RDD and after the Shafa RDD to different stages. So uh, what is a shuffle? A shuffle is quite like a reduced task. It splits the input files and distributes them into new partitions. So uh, let's see what does a DAX scheduler do. Uh, a DAX scheduler splits graph into stages and submit each stage by ready. So, uh, so a stage is a set of parallelized tasks all computing the same function that need to be run as part of the Spark job where all the tasks have the same shuffle dependencies. So each deck of tasks run by the scheduler is split up into stages at the boundary where shuffle occurs and then the deck scheduler runs these stages in a topological order uh, so the deck scheduler uh, implements stage oriented scheduling. Uh, it begins with computing a deck of stages for submitted job, and it keeps track of materialized RDD or stage outputs. And, the, and then finally, it finds a minimal schedule to run the job, and it turns the stages into task sets. Here is an example of a chain of stages. We can see that uh, stage two have uh, dependency over stage zero and stage one. And stage three uh, depends on stage one and stage two. So on submit job, uh, we first, uh, we first uh, compute uh, stage three and find that uh, it have, uh, it have a parent stage that is not ready. And then we turn to stage two and find that uh, it actually depends on stage zero and stage one. So we first submit stage zero and stage one, uh, and after uh, they are uh, after they are finished, uh, we submit stage two, and uh, after stage two uh, comes uh, success successfully, uh, we submit stage three. So in this way, we all we can avoid to uh, compute stage one for multiple times, which is ideal. Uh, so, so in the last uh, presentation, we mentioned that uh, we will compute uh, we will compute stages. Uh, so, how how do we compute a stage? Uh, actually, uh, each stage is computed with our conception called a uh, task set. A task set is a set of tasks submitted to compute the missing partitions of a particular stage. Uh, and normally, a stage only submit a uh, uh, only submit one active task set, uh, but when we count uh, uh, task failures in uh, a stage, can correspond to multiple task sets. Uh, so here we can show that uh, show an example of uh, when an uh, active task set can can fail. Uh, one reason is that uh, one or more tasks in the task set can hit a fetch failure. Uh, a fetch failure is uh, is when a task uh, want to fetch some uh, want to fetch some uh, shuffle data, and it found that oh the shuffle data is not there. Uh, so so this is called a fetch failure, and the and the task can't proceed. So so the task fails, and the task set is marked zombie. Uh, and the other ways uh, a task set can fail is that. Uh, when all available slots are, bl are blacklisted, so you can't schedule any new tasks on that, or there are some ex uh, exceptions while we, uh, while we do uh, task serialization, or, or exception while we get task result, or other exceptions, and uh, a zombie task set can have uh, one or more tasks in the task set uh, to be in the state of failure and the other task can still uh, be running. The only major difference is that uh, we don't launch new tasks for zombie task sets. So, so here we can see that 
uh, one stage can correspond to multiple task set and uh, uh, we only need one of the, these task sets to, to finish successfully to complete a stage. So here we will show how we schedule uh, tasks uh, among task sets and uh, within a task set. We use that basically uh, with a task scheduler. So a task scheduler uh, actually works uh, like uh, the deck scheduler submit uh, a set of tasks to uh, task scheduler and the task scheduler schedule and monitor tasks with scheduler backend and it returns the uh, uh, events to deck scheduler. For jobs, there are jobs submitted and job canceled and for stages, there are map stage submitted and stage canceled and for, single, for a single task, there is a completion event. Uh, either the task finished successfully or the task ended with a failure. So we currently, we schedule tasks in a batch scheduling way that uh, first we get all our variable slots to, uh, for us to use. And then we schedule tasks with locality preference on them. Uh, to launch, uh, to, to launch uh, machine learning or uh, deep learning or clouds, we are proposing another barrier scheduling approach, uh, which is uh, discussed in the JIRA ticket Spark 24375. Uh, and the general idea is that uh, we, want to, uh, we want all tasks in the same task set to be launched together. So we just wait until until all tasks in the same, same task set can be scheduled at the same time. And uh, when, we hit a task, when we get a task failure, we just uh, retry all tasks in the same task set. So how do we schedule among multiple task sets? Uh, by default, we can do it in a FIFO way, that means the earlier the task set is submitted, the earlier it gets executed. That should work for the common case, except that when we have multiple users which run jobs on a single shared cluster. In that case, we may see that uh, we have some long-running tasks that block later tasks because the long-running tasks are submitted earlier so they keeps running and keeps uh, seizing the free slots and the tasks uh, submitted uh, after it uh, may have to wait until, that, uh, until the long running task finishes. So this is not ideal. And to address this issue, we, propose, uh, we proposed another, uh, another option called fair scheduling. The fair scheduling is trying to ensure that uh, we give minimal share of, of resource for each user. So each user can, uh, can get a minor share of the cluster resource for their tasks and they won't be, blocked, uh, won't get, won't be blocked forever by other long running tasks. So there are basically two ways to schedule between task sets. The first is that uh, we do FIFO over task set managers and we order tasks by priority, uh, which we set uh, as a config. And, we, and if the uh, priority are the same, we may need to sort by stage ID, where we submit a li list of stages which don't ca have dependency on each other and under this case, uh, the priority are the same, so we start by their uh, different IDs. And for fair scheduling, uh, actually we put all the resources in the cluster in a pool, and we, we can divide the pool further into different children pools. So we can do fair scheduling between pools, or FIFO and, or, or, or fair scheduling within pools. So when we try to do fair scheduling, 
we try to launch task in a task set that is further below the minor, minimal share. So you always launch uh, tasks for, uh, for users uh, which, have, uh, which, have, which is using less of the uh, company resources. And if both task sets are running above the mi minimal share, we just order them by the weighted number of currently running tasks to help them finish earlier. So after we have chosen that uh, which task set we want to run, how do we schedule different tasks or a single task set? Uh, the general idea is that we try to achieve better locality for each task because better locality implements less data transfer over network. And it also implements a, high, a higher transfer speed over network. So both lead to a higher performance. We have different locality levels. Uh, for example, we have process locality, uh, which we can assess the data in memory or in, or in the cache. We have node locality, uh, in which way we can assess the data on local disk or rack locality, uh, even we can't uh, achieve achieve to load data on the single node, uh, we, can, uh, we can let the data transfer uh, inside the same rack, so we still get a higher transfer speed. So the task set manager is uh, responsible to schedule tasks within a single task set, uh, and it, it, it implemented a locality aware scheduling called delay scheduling. So before we go into detail of the delay scheduling, uh, we explain two, uh, we explain two, two general ideas uh, that we uh, want to achieve, uh, to achieve better locality. The first is that uh, we wait for task to finish with us queue running tasks to assign slots to new submitted uh, task sets. We wait for tasks to finish because running tasks may have finished a significant amount of works and most tasks don't take uh, quite a long time to finish. The second is that we wait for a few extra time to achieve better locality. Because that, because that we, uh, after some modeling and uh, Computing, we found that uh, with, uh, with uh, waiting for a few extra time, uh, the possibility of achieving great locality uh, becomes uh, exponentially increased. So here is, uh, here is an example how, how the delay scheduling works. First, we have a sequence of pending tasks and uh, and when we have a free slot, uh, let's, let's call that slot one. Then we, we try each task on the slot one and, uh, and to see whether the locality satisfies the uh, max locality required. And if the answer is yes, we just launch the task. It's perfect. We achieve the greater locality. And, but if not, we, we tend to see whether we have waited, uh, we, we have waited longer than the wait time out. If it's yes, it means that we have waited for a few uh, times and uh, we haven't uh, achieved a great locality. So we just uh, decided to not to wait anymore and uh, launch the task anyway. And if uh, we haven't exceeded the wait time out, we just uh, skip current uh, scheduling and uh, wait for another round of scheduling. So this is a uh, uh, further code of, uh, of how delay scheduling is implemented in Spark. You can see that uh, when, uh, where, where, where a free uh, slot is uh, available, we compute max allowed locality for pending tasks, and if there exists one task that can launch uh, with, uh, 
uh, with, uh, with a locality that is, uh, satisfies the max allowed uh, locality, then we just launch that. Otherwise, uh, we check whether the wait time is uh, larger than the max delay time. And it, uh, if the wait time is larger than the max delay time, we just uh, launch the task. Otherwise, we wait for the next round of scheduling. So for more detail of uh, delay scheduling, you can check uh, Matthias' paper. Yeah. Uh, delay scheduling, a simple te uh, technique for achieving locality and the fairness in cluster scheduling. So handle, fa handle failures is uh, another important topic for scheduling. Uh, for, regular for, for regular task failures, we believe that a failed task can finish successfully on another retry run. So based on this understanding, we just record the failure count of each task. And if uh, it haven't failed for uh, multiple times, we just retry the task. And if, uh, if, the failure task, uh, if the failure count of the task have exceeded the max text, uh, task failures, uh, we will know that, oh, something is broken, and we have to abort the whole stage and the corresponding jobs. This is a different case for a uh, fetch failure, which happens when we try to fetch a block from some address. So when a fetch failure happens, it is likely that some, uh, some, some shuffle data uh, are lost, and we can't recover from that. So instead of retry the failed task, we just retry the whole stage. So how do we retry a stage? Uh, actually, uh, for this example, result task one uh, is trying to fetch shuffle one one, and uh, it hit a fetch failure. And in this case, uh, in this case, uh, another, uh, other shuffles, I mean the shuffle zero one, shuffle zero two, and the shuffle zero three and not on the same host with shuffle one one. So, so, we, just, uh, so we just retry result, uh, result task one to finish the steady retry. And for another example, unfortunately, shuffle zero two is on the same host with shuffle one one. And uh, fetch failure on shuffle one one can mean that the host, uh, is, uh, the host ha have been go down. So shuffle zero two is also lost. And in this case, we have to first retry the shuffle map task two. And after it finished successfully, we retry the result task one. So for retry task, we just retry pairing stages if necessary. And we only retry tasks that have missing partitions. For retrying task set, we just mark green task set as zombie, and we don't kill running task to, fini uh, to hope them fini will finish in the future. So for cluster managers, actually, the cluster manager is implemented in scheduler backend, and it manages resources to schedule tasks on. We provide a local mode local cluster mode and the cluster mode for scheduler backend. A local mode is when your driver and your executor work in the same progress, and it's used for, it's used for uh, uh, running a task on your, uh, on your local node. The local cluster mode also have driver and uh, workers run on, on the same process but the executors are run on different processes, still on the same single node. And the cluster mode is used most for production environment that we run different uh, executors on multiple nodes, and uh, we might run driver on a separated driver node, or we can run driver on a worker node. We have implemented a standalone resource manager for Spark itself to, to manage resources. We also support external resource managers and the, 
currently implemented uh, external resource managers are MySource, Yarn, Kubernetes. So uh, the workers actually execute tasks and uh, store and serve blocks. The worker is a container for executors and it provides threads to run tasks and uh, it, it provides a block manager to store and serve blocks. It is also optional to start the external shuffle service, which can continue serve blocks even when the executor has exited. So here, are, so at the last, uh, I want to give some tips to improve your job performance. The first is that we may break long running tasks into simple or short tasks. The major reason is that uh, in that way you have more chance to have available slots. So you have more chance to, uh, to, schedule, to schedule for appending tasks and to achieve greater locality. And uh, another reason is that uh, a simple or short task may cost, uh, cost less during recovering from failure. The second tip is that we may broadcast a small hot input files because when you have multiple job or tasks need to read from the same data file and unfortunately the data file is small so it only present on a small fraction of nodes. And under that case, uh, you can't achieve greater locality, uh, so you have to broadcast your small hot input files, and you can, you can, uh, you can achieve at least a, a node locality through e for every task you launched, and that, uh, and that will quite greatly improve your performance. So that's all, and thank you.